I welcome you to our video regarding the dynamics of robots. The first considerations will be quite general and also apply to robotic arms. In the application example, however, we will then look specifically at mobile robots. I would like to describe the principle using the example of a point of mass. A force acts on the mass. This leads to an acceleration of the mass. According to Newton, the acceleration is proportional to the force. The sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. This is described in this case for the x direction. Let us now write the equation for the spatial case as a vector equation and split the forces into partial forces. The force Fa is the actuator force, which is the force that we apply to the mass with a drive element, for example, a motor. But there are also disturbing forces such as friction, which we call Fd here. In addition, the gravitational force Fg also acts on the mass. With this, we have found the dynamics of the mass point, including disturbance and gravitational forces. Into which form you want to transform the equation depends on what you want to do with it. Often an algorithm is needed to simulate the behavior of the mass. In this case, we resolve the equation to the acceleration vector, which you can then integrate to get the velocity at the position. As a roboticist, however, we often use the equation to determine the actuating forces we need to apply in order to follow a given trajectory. In this case, we speak of feed forward control or computed torque. Let's look at a one dimensional example. We have a mass moving upwards in the set direction. The gravitational force pulls the mass downwards. Friction acts against the direction of movement. As the mass moves upwards, the force acts downwards. A force is applied that is large enough to accelerate the mass upwards. Let's put that into our equation of motion. We consider the driving force to be positive if it is pointed in the set direction. If we assume that the friction is Coulomb friction, the amount is constant and acts in the opposite direction of the sign of the movement, which you take into account with the signum function. However, this only applies to non-zero velocities. The gravitational force is m times g and in the negative z direction. For the simulation, we resolve the equation to z dot dot. For feed forward control, we calculate the actuating force depending on the acceleration and compensate for friction and gravity. Based on the considerations presented, I would like to show and explain the general dynamic equation of the dynamics of robots. The parameters and terms of this equation have the following meanings. Q in lower case represents the generalized robot coordinate. Therefore, it can be, for example, a joint angle or the position of linear axis. Q dot is therefore the velocity in generalized robot coordinates and Q dot dot corresponds to the acceleration. The mass matrix represents all masses and moments of inertia of the robot that depends on the generalized robot coordinates. For example, the inertia of a robot arm about the set axis depends on whether the arm is extended or retracted. Multiplying the mass matrix by the acceleration vector Q dot dot if the acceleration force in generalized robot coordinates according to Newton's law. Friction is modeled in the term FF. The term V represents the so-called false forces. These are Coriolis and centrifugal terms. For example, if a robot rotates very fast around its z-axis, the arm is pulled outwards by the centrifugal force the false force according to d'Alembert and applies a torque to the elbow joint. This term is therefore dependent on the generalized robot positions and velocities. The gravitational term describes the influence of gravity and depends on the position Q of the robot. Externally acting disturbance forces can be taken into account 
by transforming them into robot coordinates by multiplication with the transpose Jacobi matrix. The result of the equation is the generalized robot forces Q in capital letters, which represent the actuation forces that are imposed on the robot. This equation can be used to describe any robot. In most cases, however, only the first three terms are used and the last two are inured. Lagrangian mechanics is often used to derive the specific equation for a particular robot. However, how to find the terms in this equation as easily as possible is highly dependent on the, your robot kinematics. In this video, we will only discuss our mobile robot. Sometimes you do not want to describe the equation in robot coordinates, but in a Cartesian coordinate system. This is made visible in this formula by writing x next to the terms. Although the equation is described in Cartesian coordinates, the parameters of the terms are usually not made dependent on the Cartesian position velocities, but on the values in generalized robot coordinates. This representation is very valuable when you want to control in the operational space. We would like to take a closer look at the dynamic behavior of our mobile robot. To simplify the analysis a little, we introduce delta w, which represents half the wheel distance. Then we introduce a suitable coordinate system. We draw in the center of gravity of the robot and denote the mass of the robot as well as the moment of inertia around the center of gravity. Since it is difficult to estimate the mass moment of inertia, we replace it with the mass times the radius of inertia squared. This radius is easy to estimate with a little experience, but we also know the point around which the robot can be rotated. We call it the pivot point and it is the center point on the axis between the wheels and we find the distance between the center of gravity and the pivot point as delta c. Since the dynamic equations can be described either around the center of gravity or the fixed axis of rotation, we choose this pivot point as the axis of rotation for our derivations and calculate the moment of inertia with Steiner's theorem accordingly. Thanks to the description of the moment of inertia with the radius of inertia, IP is shown very intuitively. The radius of inertia and the displacement according to Steiner add as vectors and thus in principle result in the radius of inertia around the pivot point. We assume that the vehicle is pushed with the force Fp and therefore accelerates with Xp dot dot and we set up Newton's equation for this. The force Fp is, of course, nothing other than the sum of the driving forces of the two wheels, which we denote here by QR and QL for the right and the left wheels. The acceleration at pivot is the average of the two wheel accelerations. If we insert the forces and accelerations of the wheels into the equation, we get a first dynamic relationship between them. Let us now set up the angular momentum theorem. Delta W times QR produces a positive torque and delta W times QL produces a negative torque. According to Newton, the sum of torques is equal to the rotational acceleration times the rotational moment of inertia IP. The rotational acceleration is the difference between the wheel accelerations divided by the wheel distance, which in our case is two times delta W. By inserting this equation, we obtain another relationship between wheel accelerations and wheel forces. We insert IP and divide the equation by delta W. We then simplify the equation by introducing a factor alpha with which we express and describe the distribution of inertia. This gives us the second dynamic relationship between forces and accelerations of the wheels. We now have two equations with which we can derive the mass matrix. We now add the two equations, which gives us QR and eliminates QL. 
we calculate the difference of the two equations, which gives us QL and eliminates QR. We can now choose a vector representation of the dynamic equation and factor out m quarters and the matrix. With this, we find Q vector equals mass matrix times acceleration vector, with Q consisting of QR and QL and Q dot dot consisting of Q dot dot right and Q dot dot left. We have now found the mass matrix and it looks very clear and well structured. The factor alpha essentially describes the mass distribution on the robot in relation to the wheel distance. The sum of Ri squared and delta C squared is essentially the radius of inertia squared around the pivot point. If half the wheel distance delta W is equal to this radius of inertia, alpha becomes one and both wheels feels, feel half the mass each, which we presented earlier as a good approximation. Unfortunately, however, we have not yet taken the motor inertia into account, which could disturb our beautiful and elegant solution. We know that the reduced motor inertia is calculated by multiplying the motor's rotational moment of inertia by the gear ratio I squared. Since the gear ratio I is defined as the input speed divided by the output speed, the total gear ratio I from the gearbox of the drive is divided by the wheel radius, which is d half. Thus, md equals 2id divided by d squared times i from the motor gearbox. Since the motor inertia act on each wheel individually, the mass matrix of the motor inertia is a diagonal matrix. The total matrix is now the sum of the mass matrices of the robot and the motor inertia. Thus, we have found the general mass matrix of our robot with respect to the generalized robot coordinates. Sometimes we also want to apply the control in the operational space and perhaps we would then also like to use the exact dynamic equations. For example, the tool center point could be used for this. Let us imagine that our actuating force acts on the TCP, which leads to an acceleration. In order to be able to calculate the relationship, we want a dynamic equation expressed with Cartesian forces and accelerations. Do we now need to work out the dynamic equations for this case? Fortunately, there is an equation with which one can calculate the mass matrix in operational space from the already known mass matrix, namely by multiplying the mass matrix with the inverse transport Jacobian matrix before and with the inverse Jacobian matrix after. However, we will not do the calculations here in order not to go beyond the scope of this video. Thank you for your interest and we look forward to welcoming you to other videos on robotic topics. We are happy to answer questions about this on the forum in Moodle at online.robotics.ch.